If you've ever played Splatoon or even just watched some gameplay, you're probably pretty aware of one of the game's main mechanics, change from kid to squid form, which is done by pressing the ZL button. While in squid form, you move around faster, you can hide from opponents, that sort of thing. Now changing back from squid to kid form is as simple as releasing the ZL button. This crisp, quick animation is so common, the average Splatoon player has probably seen it thousands of times without even thinking about it. But what if I told you this simple transformation can be a divisive, even rage-inducing mechanic that has resulted in people straight up quitting games? Now that sounds pretty insane to me, so let's take a deeper look at the how and why of Splatoon's most controversial action, squid bagging. Squid bagging is the term given to the action of rapidly mashing the ZL button to transform from kid to squid form and back over and over again. It looks ridiculous, and it sounds ridiculous too. Now if you combine the mashing of ZL with the mashing of the jump button, typically X, that allows you to flap around wildly and looks a little bit like this. The word itself is a combination of squid and teabagging, a common taunt and disrespectful gesture made popular in video games due to the advent of online multiplayer. Its rise is generally associated with the original Halo, where it was used almost exclusively to disrespect one's opponent, but in Splatoon, squid bagging is a bit more complicated. Now we're going to get into why it's used. Squid bagging is a multifaceted action in Splatoon, and like its ancestor teabagging in Halo, it's mainly used to taunt or disrespect an opponent. We will get to why people would taunt or disrespect in a second, but first we'll take a look at some other ways squid bagging is used. For lighthearted moments, casual encounters, and fun times, squid bagging is used to celebrate, goof off, and just generally showcase the silliness and wackiness that Splatoon exhibits. The community has deemed lobbies where players squid bag around the map while ignoring objective play squid parties, which are common in casual play and casual content creation as well. As a direct relation to this, squid bagging can signify that a player doesn't intend to take a match seriously and just wants to goof off or have a fun time. This is commonly seen in matches where one team has a disconnect, which is commonly referred to as a DC, and thus they're at an immediate disadvantage and decide that it's easier to just forfeit the match than try and play it out. You'll see this sometimes in ranked, sometimes in scrims among competitive teams, or just in casual lobbies with friends too. Squid bagging also has some usefulness in movement techniques and glitch execution. On graded surfaces, like those on Kelp Dome and other maps, squid bagging across grates allows a player to move a little bit faster if they don't have run speed and also is able to shrink their hitbox without falling through the grating. It is useful to juke opponents or shake out of enemy ink as well. For glitches, squid bagging is useful as the rapid change in the size of the hitbox and the various properties associated with that rapid change allow the player to reach areas and clip into structures that normally wouldn't be possible. However, due to the rather quick reactive nature of the developer's most popular glitches that allow a player to reach unintended areas are patched out relatively quickly. This is and was the case for both Splatoon 1 and 2. Now let's talk about the main and most divisive use of squid bagging, disrespect and taunting. Now before we get into why it's used in Splatoon, let's just go over some general things first. Almost every competitive activity on Earth has some form of taunting or disrespect baked into it, as the mental game is just as important as the physical game. For example, look at uh, touchdown celebrations in the NFL, or the all-encompassing bat flip of the MLB. This applies to Splatoon as well. Sure, getting a ton of splats and doing well with objective is important, but the mental game can give a player an edge, and in a competitive game with highly contested rankings, any edge a player can gain is going to be utilized. Squid bagging can disorient, frustrate, or anger your opponent, which will alter their focus and attention, which opens up the potential for greater and more costlier mistakes in game, which you can then capitalize on to secure a stronger lead or even KO a match. A common example of how effective squid bagging can be is after you splat someone. Since Splatoon forces the player to watch their opponents for a few seconds before returning to the spawn platform, you know that your opponent will be watching you, so you can squid bag to try and get in their head. 
almost anyone who's played Splatoon will know how this feels, and I would go out on a limb to say that most people will instantly want to splat that person back to show them who's boss. It is human nature that we don't want to be disrespected or upstaged. However, that is exactly what the person who squid bagged you wants to happen. If you focus solely on splatting that particular player, you might leave yourself open, ignore the objective, or misplay in a way that could cost you or your team a lead or a match. When a player focuses solely on one thing, like splatting a squid bagger, it's called tunneling. Tunneling is one of the most effective symptoms of squid bagging, as it can effectively reduce a player's entire output to nothing since they are so focused on splatting the enemy who bagged them. This is just one way the mental game of Splatoon can play out. If you upset an enemy player, they could also change strategies, back off from engagements, leave areas unattended, or in the most serious cases, rage quit from the game entirely. In competitive play, this can be like an echo chamber, as getting angry, or tilting as it's commonly referred to, can affect how a player plays the rest of a scrim, tournament set, or exhibition match. They could switch weapons in between matches, stop calling out and communicating effectively with their teammates, or ignore teammates and objectives entirely. Most casual players will not really see this as much since they do not play competitively, but still, something as simple as a squid bag can impact how a set plays out dramatically. Squid bagging can also be a taunt and a celebration simultaneously. The most famous example of this in competitive Splatoon was during the E3 2019 championship in Game 5 between the US and European teams. Kyo, one of the best players in the Western scene, was getting double team and managed to win a 2v1 engagement against two of the best players from Europe. There's a lot of traffic and really easy for teams to respawn. It'll buy some friends, but right now, how did that happen? Kyo, unbelievable! Two advantage on the field for FT lead already. They're going to go ahead and move this tower to the checkpoint. Unbelievable display of individual skill there, Don. He shouldn't have gotten either of those. That's not how that's supposed to work. There's a glitch in the system. We talk about how this is a long match, Ashley, but things happening like that at the beginning can set the stage for the entire match. This play was a big turning point in the match, and you can see the momentum shift as FT win, the North American team, went on to win the game and the set. Kyo celebrated his amazing play by squid bagging for a little bit, as he had just pulled off a literally insane play. This had two effects. One, it tilted his opponents, giving him the mental edge, and two, it showcased the hype of the play that just occurred, which bolstered his own confidence and his team's confidence, and allowed him to keep playing at a high level. The chat was torn when he did this, which leads me into the last part of this video. Why is squid bagging controversial? Many players find disrespectful behavior, especially by high-level competitors, beneath the dignity of the game. In these players' minds, it showcases poor behavior and poor sportsmanship, which diminishes the fairness of the game. Most societies as a whole have an unspoken but agreed-upon system of manners or etiquette for conducting oneself. Squid bagging can be seen as incorrect and wrong because it violates the system of manners and etiquette that they see existing within the game. In simple terms, some people think it's rude and it shouldn't be done because people are just trying to have fun or play the game, not get disrespected or taunted. The flip side to that argument is that squid bagging, taunting, and disrespect is part of the game, the mental game, as the mental edge it can provide is necessary to the competition and can, in fact, enhance gameplay, narratives, storytelling, and matches as the raw emotion that it elicits makes the game more fun to play and more fun to watch. This is seen all over sports media. When athletes butt heads or beef with each other, viewers are more likely to engage, as it is more interesting and more compelling. The same applies to Splatoon, more competitively than casually, however. Now, regardless of where you stand on it, squid bagging will not be going anywhere anytime soon. With Splatoon 3 on the horizon and the transformation mechanics still present, this controversial action will be around for years to come. So next time someone squid bags you, whether it be just a goof off, try and execute a glitch, juke, or taunt you, just know that awkward flailing has got a meaning behind it. Let me know your thoughts on squid bagging in the comments, thanks for watching, and remember to obliterate that like button and demolish subscribe if you want to see more Splatoon content. I'm Jext, have a good one.